Recently, Retivis, who is a seller of SV Pony products on Amazon, reached out to me and asked me, could I use their SV105 electronic eyepiece camera on the moon and give it a bit of a review? And I thought this is a good opportunity to show people what it's like to get into lunar photography using a camera at a much lower price point. The unboxing experience is minimal. As you can see, you just get a plain box with the SV Bonnie logo and the SV105 on it designation. And inside you get an instruction manual, little protective cover, little cleaning cloth, the USB cable, on one end it's a USB type B connector and on the other end there's two USB connectors. Now only one of these needs plugging in for the camera to work. And I'm not entirely sure why the other one exists. Maybe it's for higher transfer rate. And then of course the actual camera, logo on the back. And, and that's it, that's the, that's the unboxing. Definitely no frills, but straight to the point. And you know what, that's not a criticism. Just merely an observation. So here's the camera, and we're gonna go back in time now to a younger Raz who was using it then, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna talk about it. So stick around. One issue to face is that the SV105 as an electronic eyepiece only comes in 1.25 inch. So naturally it's not gonna fit on that. Thankfully, there's a really easy solution to this. The Crayford Focuser has a 1.25 inch adapter to it. So if I just pop that out, pop that out, and then this goes in here. And now we just take that off. and pop that in. We're now polar aligned, so star, solar system, moon, go to. Oh, I saw it go by actually, so we're not that far out. I also saw which way it went, which is always useful. All right, let's go fishing for the moon. So that's the sin scan app. <laughs> okay. It's always weirdly exciting being able to do that. Oh, that's really out of focus. Do you hear that? That is the end of travel. Let me go get one of the end pay accessories. So this is just a normal fear. All right, so I'm guessing this has to go all the way to the back of focus. Hey, there we go. We're finally in focus. Now we just need to center. And looks like I got my orientation wrong. So let's just move that like that. And uh, now I've got focus. Hmm, look at this. The shortest exposure goes to 15.6 milliseconds. That is too bright. How are we gonna dim this down? Maybe, just maybe, I'm going to have to use my moon filter. Mm. Changing the brightness slider seems to be changing it. It's not doing it the way I want to do it, you know what I mean? Let me go get my moon filter. I mean, really calling this thing a moon filter is very generous. It's, <laughs> it's one of these cheap things you buy. Uh, I don't even think the threads work on it. Does this SV... Yeah, it has got thread fil uh, threads on it. Filter threads on the nose piece, so... Right, now we're in business. I mean, if I try to match the camera to what I'm seeing... It's probably like that. 
really I'm going to keep gain all the way down I think the lowest gain usually offers you the highest dynamic range and for the moon I feel like dynamic range is quite an important thing especially when it's first quarter so let's change the exposure that looks well exposed to me actually I feel like I might run with this well first of all I'm going to focus it because it definitely looks out of focus so I can afford to chop the bottom off here and leave more room at the top for stacking though really I shouldn't lose that much in the way of the stacking and registration process so let's do we're rocking 14 and a half frames per second. Let's do 3000 frames. Oh, we're down to five frames now. I think what has happened. Yeah, look, it's dropping frames. I believe this camera obviously doesn't have a memory buffer in it, or if it does, it's not a very big memory buffer. So we might actually be here for some time. So I might stop this and do less frames or you just leave it well something like that is what we're probably going to end up with so while i wait for this to finish we're just over halfway through i'll tell you more about this camera it's it's advertised as an electronic eyepiece it's got a two megapixel cmos sensor in it not much but if you're using it as just an eyepiece then sure that's plenty the actual sensor dimensions are 5.76 by 3.2 there thereabouts with three micron pixels so 1920 by 1080p uh, resolution so it's full hd just at two megapixels so this picture of the moon should look fine on desktop so that's always nice my partner quite likes the moon so hopefully this will make a nice photo for her but you know it's it's also quite cheap. It's really cheap, actually, for a camera. It's cheaper than some eyepieces. It's £45 thereabouts. And like I said, Retevis, 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 the supplier for SV Bonnie on Amazon sent me this for review. You know what? Aside from needing to use a moon filter because I can't get the exposure short enough, that's a downside. Um, it's actually quite nice. With my ATED, at least, I needed to use a, a about 20 or 30 mil extension to get it to focus, but I think that's more on the telescope, I believe, than the actual <laughs> camera. But I'd say just get some extensions ready. You might need them. But so far, you know, for £45, the data that's coming through on SharpCap looks pretty good, actually. I'm looking forward to editing this. So I might actually now go get the Sky Max, the big Max it of, the 8-inch Mac, and try that. Yeah, I'm going to try the Mac. It's going to be some mega close-up. I don't know if trying to do this in situ is going to be brave or stupid. So if I'm being honest with myself, it probably feels more stupid. Ooh, return of the Mac. I quite like this instrument, actually. Probably not standard telescope changing procedure, but hey, it's on. <laughs> don't think I should try that again. Now, Enpei actually lent me this SkyMax. So, this feels only right. And of course, it's nowhere to be seen. I tell you what I've done. I done forgot that this instrument is F15. So, my exposures just wasn't long enough. That was what was happening. But you can see, look at this field of view. Look how deep into the moon we are. Like, this could make a killer mosaic. Like, if you know how to... I mean, I've never done a mosaic before, and I'm not about to learn tonight. But this would make an awesome mosaic. I'm going to pick this crater. I am going to take this moon filter out, though. I feel like I don't need it anymore. Consider my exposure's at half a second. I'm sure now... I can control my exposure by using my exposure time. Oh golly gosh. Oh, that's so dreadfully overexposed. Apparently it's not as still up there as I thought. And this instrument should be... The instrument should be cold enough because I've had it outside for hours. And now we get to the review section. As you saw from the video, using this camera is really quite straightforward. 
but it really does need a faster exposure setting because my refractor isn't exactly the fastest telescope on earth. And I couldn't get a well exposed picture of the moon without using a lunar filter. And the issue about using that was it put a hideous color cast over everything. The photos I'm about to show you from that session are all in black and white and that is because the moon filter had such a strong color cast on it I couldn't correct for it properly. And the photos from the Maxitov were blurry because I think it's really well out of collimation so all the colors are everywhere it looked like a blur so I just put the black and white done. This is on me I'm not very good at editing photos of the moon especially at that focal length. And especially I feel the photos coming out of the refractor are really quite nice for this camera. The build quality of the SV-105 is really good. It's compact, it's tight, it feels sturdy. And there's no nonsense. You have a sensor and you have a USB port. And other than that, there's nothing else going on in the camera body. And sometimes there's something to be said about that. It's a good thing. At £45.99, I don't want to use the word cheap. I want to use the word affordable. If you're just wanting to get into lunar photography, whether you're using a Maxitov, a Newtonian, a refractor, whatever you, for the price point, I think the SV-105 is quite a good starting block. At the price point, I was expecting a product of lesser grade, let's say. So I'm actually genuinely surprised by the SV-105. If you've just got your first telescope and you're looking at getting into lunar photography just as your, your beginning foundation steps, I believe you'll enjoy the SV-105. You know, like I said, it's affordable, it's, it's basic, it does the job. If you're interested in the product, there's a link in the description below. And what do you think of this? Were you expecting a different product for this price point? And are you as impressed as I am about this? This was more than capable than I was expecting. But for now, it is time to say clear skies, everybody. Thank you very much for watching. And keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. I'll see you later.